Hey, welcome back to WIF Facts. Snake bites are more prevalent in tropical regions and predominantly agricultural areas where a substantial human population shares their environment with a multitude of snakes. Global estimates suggest that annually, there are up to 1.8 million snake bites, resulting in 20,000 to 94,000 fatalities. Consequently, swift initiation of antivenom treatment is imperative. Depending on the venom's quantity and toxicity, multiple antivenom injections may be necessary to effectively counteract the venom. In the direst situations, there might not be a specific antivenom available for the snake responsible. In this video, we will explore 8 venomous snakes without antivenom. Let's travel to Africa and meet 3 of these snakes. Are you new to this channel? I really appreciate you subscribing and hitting the notification bell. Number 1. African Bush Viper A wildlife care specialist at the San Diego Zoo had to be hospitalized following a venomous snake bite. Authorities report that the incident occurred while the worker was tending to an African bush viper in a restricted section of the zoo. The venom of the bush viper is hematoxic, leading to the destruction of red blood cells, disruption of blood clotting, and the potential for organ or tissue damage, posing a potentially life-threatening situation for the victim. Presently, there is no specific antivenom available for bush vipers, however, some treatments have shown success in managing their bites. The African bush viper is a venomous snake indigenous to the central and western regions of Africa. Being arboreal, they prefer tree habitats and are commonly found in tropical rainforests forests, with infrequent interactions with humans. These snakes can reach a length of 2.5 feet and display vibrant colors such as green, red, orange, or yellow, with spiky scales that contribute to their dragon-like appearance. Number 2. Spiny Bush Viper Indigenous to Central Africa, spiny bush vipers inhabit tropical areas, particularly rainforests. Their scientific name is derived from Greek words signifying hairy and tailed. These venomous snakes, characterized by spiny scales, are relatively small, with males reaching up to 29 inches and females up to 23 inches. Their bodies are adorned with green or brownish keeled scales, providing a bristly appearance that earns them the name spiny bush viper. These creatures are semi-arboreal, favoring tree climbing for most of the day. Their neurotoxic venom can lead to significant internal organ hemorrhaging if bitten. The bite may cause localized pain, swelling, and, in severe cases, bleeding. The toxicity varies based on factors such as the snake, bite location, and even current weather and altitude. Similar to all atheris species, there is currently no specific antivenom, making a bite potentially fatal without prompt first aid. Despite their venomous nature, bites are relatively uncommon due to their remote habitat and nocturnal behavior. Number 3. Twig Snake Known as bird snakes or vine snakes, Twig snakes belong to a genus of rear-fanged venomous reptiles native to Africa. These snakes can reach a length of 48 inches. True to their name, twig snakes have a slender, twig-like body resembling a vine hanging from a tree. All species in this genus possess a horizontal pupil, shaped like a keyhole, providing them with binocular vision. Twig snakes typically have a grayish-brown coloration with subtle light and dark markings. When faced with a threat, they can inflate their throat, revealing bold black markings between the scales. Twig snake bites pose a potential threat to life, as their venom is hematoxic, impacting the blood clotting mechanism and leading to uncontrolled bleeding and internal hemorrhaging. Instances of human fatalities resulting from twig snake bites have been documented, for instance, renowned herpetologist Robert Mertens succumbed to a bite while feeding his pet savanna twig snake. During that time, there was no suitable anti-venom available, and he endured 18 days of suffering before his demise. For the remaining snakes, let's travel more than 4,000 miles to reach Asia. Number 4. Monocled Cobra from West Bengal The monocled cobra, also known as the monocellate cobra and Indian spitting cobra, is a venomous species widely distributed across South and Southeast Asia. Recognizable by its O-shaped or monocellate hood pattern at the rear of the hood, these cobras typically exhibit dark brown to black coloration and can reach a maximum length of 7.5 feet in adult Hood. Active mainly during dusk, monocled cobras are terrestrial and are often found in tree holes and areas abundant with rodents. Some populations of monocled cobras possess the ability to spit venom, leading to their designation as Indian spitting cobras. In India, the generic antivenom is used for almost all venomous snake bites. However, research from the Indian Institute of Science has indicated that the widely used Big Four antivenom, derived from the venom of spectacled cobra, common krite, Russell's viper, and saw-scaled viper, may not be universally effective across all regions 
regions of the country. For instance, the monocled cobra in the West Bengal area was found to have venom three times more neurotoxic than that of the common cobra, affecting the nerve tissues of the victim. Number 5. Monocled Cobra from Arunachal Pradesh Researchers focused on the monocled cobra from the Arunachal Pradesh region in northeastern India, studying its venomous characteristics. The investigation revealed significant shortcomings in the efficiency of antivenoms against the toxins. One of the antivenoms proved entirely ineffective in a mouse model when confronted with the Arunachal Pradesh monocled cobra's venom. The venom from these snakes demonstrated extreme cytotoxicity, containing over five times the cytotoxins present in the venom of the common cobra. Cytotoxins, impacting the body's cells, can result in tissue necrosis, leading to the formation of a sizable open sore. Cobra bites of this nature pose a considerable challenge as they often leave victims with lasting injuries, disfigurement, and disabilities. Number 6. Sint Krite. The Sint Krite, a venomous elephant snake belonging to the Krite species, is indigenous to northwestern India, Afghanistan, and Pakistan. This medium-sized snake can reach lengths of up to 6.5 feet, presenting a glossy black or bluish-black body adorned with either paired or unpaired milky white bands along its length. The eyes of the Sint Krite are small, appearing entirely black. Displaying nocturnal activity like other krites, it frequently shares habitats with humans, leading to fatal incidents primarily occurring at night due to the snake's highly potent venom. The venom of the Sint krite contains neurotoxins similar to those found in the common krite, yet it is 6 to 11 times more potent. Remarkably, researchers discovered that its venom is a staggering 40 times more potent than that of the common cobra. Number 7. Sauterex Sawscaled Viper Sauterex Sawscaled Viper, also recognized as the Eastern Sawscaled Viper and Stemler's Sawscaled Viper, represents a venomous subspecies of viper present in India, Pakistan, Afghanistan, Iran, and certain regions of the Arabian Peninsula. It is a diminutive snake, characterized by its cylindrical and slender body, with a notably short tail, capable of reaching a maximum length of 3 feet. The snake exhibits a tan hue adorned with dark brown markings and blotches, typically inhabiting sandy and rocky terrains, including soft soils and scrublands. When disturbed, it adopts an S-shaped coil position, generating a rasping sound by rubbing the sides of its body together. Possessing a highly nervous, irritable, and aggressive temperament, this viper promptly strikes at the slightest provocation and seldom attempts to flee. An incident involving a 47-year-old snake breeder bitten by a Sautrex sawscaled viper underscores the necessity for more targeted antivenom development. In this particular case, there was no antivenom specifically designed for Sautrex sawscaled viper, requiring the administration of 20 vials to halt the acute symptoms of systemic envenoming. Number 8. Malayan Blue Coral Snake The Malayan Blue Coral Snake, also known as the Blue Coral Snake, is a stunning yet highly venomous front famed elipid native to Southeast Asia. It thrives in both primary and secondary forests, particularly in lowland and lower montane regions. Instantly recognizable by its red head, tail, and belly, the snake boasts a dark blue to black back, often adorned with a prominent blue or white stripe on each flank. This medium-sized coral snake has a slender body, with adults reaching lengths of up to 5 feet 11 inches. The venom of the blue coral snake acts swiftly, inducing immediate full-body spasms and paralysis. Remarkably, it possesses the longest venom glands among all snakes, extending up to 25% of the body's length. The potency of their venom is attributed to their dietary preference for highly venomous snakes like the king cobra. This adaptation is essential for paralyzing and eliminating such formidable prey. The venom contains a distinctive toxic element called caliotoxin, which causes near-instantaneous paralysis by blocking the victim's sodium channels. The blue coral snake has been linked to human fatalities, with at least two reported cases in Malaysia. In 1956, a young child succumbed to a snake bite two hours after being bitten at the base of the thumb, and in 1985, a man passed away within five minutes after receiving bites on his left toe. Regarded as one of the most perilous snakes in Southeast Asia, its venom is so potent that the species has earned the moniker 100 paces, symbolizing the belief that no person can walk more than 100 steps after being bitten. And that completes our list of eight venomous snakes without specific antivenoms for their bite. What do you think are the measures or strategies currently being pursued to address the absence of specific antivenoms for these eight venomous snakes, considering the potential risks they pose to human health? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.